you are welcome once again tonight we are dealing on this just before you go tonight and we are dealing on the topic that say looking unto jesus looking unto jesus and uh, i have took my time to look at the scriptures and they asked myself a very big question why did the scripture say we should look unto jesus why did the scripture commanded us to look unto jesus in your circumstances you look unto jesus it doesn't matter what you are going through you look unto jesus in the days of jehoshaphat when the great multitude was around them they went unto god and they say oh god our eyes are on you which means lord we look unto you for you to solve this problem and god said to them he said you don't need to fight in this battle and i'm telling somebody tonight that is listening to me there is a battle that you have been fighting in your life that is not your battle the problem is this you have not hand over that battle to god the problem is you are not looking unto god in that battle but after tonight that battle the lord will win that battle for you the lord will fight that battle for you in the name of jesus amen and amen please as you come on keep on cheering make somebody belong this evening make somebody to know it doesn't matter what i'm going through there is someone to look onto there is a god to look onto hallelujah be a brother be a sister that can help somebody tonight to 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 live to have a new life hallelujah to live more hallelujah to go to bed with hope go to bed with assurance that i can look up to god for me to end up in shame bible say and they look up to him and they were not put to shame and their face we are lightning tonight your face will be lightning in the name of jesus we go into the book of hebrews chapter 12 we are reading verse 2 hebrews chapter 12 we are reading verse 2 everyone knows that scripture hebrews 12 and the bible says here looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith what did he do what did he do he is the author he is the finisher of our faith so every battle we're supposed to fight where faith is jesus fight that battle and he won that oh my god <laughs> every battle that belongs to you that needed faith to win jesus had fight those battle he finished that battle he is the author he is the finisher of our what our faith not his faith our faith that is the reason why that when you look up to him in faith you get through when you look up to him in faith you become a winner when you look up to him in faith you get healed when you look up to him in faith you change hallelujah tonight i see god touching somebody i see deliverance coming on your way i see god lifting you it's a looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith he is the author he is the finisher of our faith now if the bible says that we look unto jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith now listen very carefully just before we go to bed tonight i want you to understand this that jesus is our example follow me in this jesus is our example jesus is our example jesus is our true image <laughs> follow me follow me on this follow me on this i'm going somewhere jesus is our true image where we are on earth today is not our image where you are now you will see weakness 
where we are now, all we will see is weakness. All we will see is shortcoming. But when you look unto Jesus, you will see strength. When you look unto Jesus, hallelujah, you will not see weakness. When you look unto Jesus, what happened? You will feel, you will see strength. Hallelujah. So where we are now is not our true image. Stop playing with the world. Stop looking at the things of this world. Don't allow the things of this world to stand as an image to you. Because when the things of this world become your image, remember, Bible said, the heaven and earth shall pass away, but the true image of God will never pass away. So Jesus is our true image. We, where we are, is not our image. On earth here is not our image. Where you are now, you will only see weakness, which you can testify about that. Where you are now, you can only see shortcomings, which we all can testify about that. Where you are now, you can only see you sinking, which we can testify about that. Where you are now, you can only see how you can make it, which we all can testify about that. Where we are now, we can see hopelessness. We can see sadness. Hallelujah. We can see depression. We can see bitterness. We can see hatred where we are right now. But in Christ, what we see is true image. In Christ, what we see is true image. And when you see your true image, you behave. <laughs> when you see your true image, you behave. Men that misbehave is men that have what they call identity crisis. When you have image crisis, when you don't know who you look like. But when you see Jesus, who is your image? Hallelujah. When you see Jesus, which is your example, things change, life change which we are going to see by the message of the Lord. Now, there is a brother in the Bible called Apostle Peter. Please follow me now. It will be more clearer. Apostle Peter, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 14. We are reading from verse 28, and we are reading to 30. Matthew 14, from verse 28. The Bible says, Matthew 14, from verse 28. And I read, and I read, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. I want you to begin to look at this. And Peter said to Jesus, if you are the same person, tell me to come. If you are Christ, tell me to come. And what happened? Verse 29, and Jesus said, come. And when Jesus said, come, and when Peter was out, when Peter was come down out of the ship, Peter began to walk on the water to go to Jesus. So when Peter was facing Christ, Peter was seeing his true identity. Peter was seeing his true image. Before you go to bed tonight, see your true image. When you see your true image, no demon can torment you. Before you go to bed tonight, see your true image. When you see your true image, you will not think as if you have no hope. Peter see the true image of who he is. Peter began to walk in the supernatural. Peter began to walk on the world. A man that see his true image walk on the word of God. Peter began to walk on the world. Come. But I want you to look at this. And when 
I'm re okay, I'm reading verse 30 now. And when he saw the wind, he got distracted. His focus changed. Why have your focus changed? Why did you change your focus to what you believe? Why did you change your focus from your real or your true image? The day your focus is being shifted from your true image, you begin to sink. The day your focus is being shifted from your true image, you begin to have problem. The day your focus shifted from your true image, you begin to have shift break. The day your focus change, hallelujah, from your true image, problem all over. The day your focus change from your true image, you can't sleep. If you want Jesus, because Jesus knew the image of who he is. Jesus was in the boat, but there was a problem. Jesus was in the boat. There was trouble. Jesus was in the boat. There was a wind. But do you know what happened? Jesus was under the boat, sleeping comfortable. Why? Because Jesus always look at the true image. Jesus always look at his true image. I pray tonight that you will behold your true image. Behold your true image. When you look at your true image, things change. When you look at your true image, you will get healed. When you look at your true image, hallelujah, you stand up on your feet. When you look at your true image, you walk in wonders. When you look at your true image, what deprive you from sleeping will be what that will put you to sleep. When you look at your true image, fear disappeared from you. When you look at your true image, what bothers others will not bother you. Because Jesus is your true image. Where you are is not your image. So where you are, you can only see failure. You can only see weakness. You can only see shortcoming. But in Christ, no shortcoming. In Christ, no failure. In Christ, no sickness. In Christ, no struggle. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So tonight, God, before you go to bed, you are being challenged to look unto Jesus. And I'm going to show you something right now. I'm going to take you to the Old Testament. And we will stand, start there and begin to see something. And that is the reason why it is very important that you start looking unto Jesus, which is your image. Why do I say that? When you read the book of Numbers, I want you to go to the book of Numbers chapter 21. Numbers 21. We are reading verse 8 and 9. Numbers 21, we are reading 8 and 9. Numbers, we read 8 and 9. Look at what the Bible says here. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is biting, when he looketh upon it, he shall leave. My God. When he looketh upon it, he shall leave. When he, listen, this is Jesus in the wilderness. This is Jesus in the book of Numbers. When you look at upon it, you shall live. When you look at upon it, you shall live. Now look at what happened now. Verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of a brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent have bite beaten any man, when he beheld, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he live. Look and live. Look and live. Look and succeed. Look and prosper. Look and move forward. Look and see your image when any man behold the serpent in the pole, you shall live. And I have come to speak to somebody tonight that as you look up to Jesus, you shall live. When you look up to Jesus, no discouragement. Now follow me. 
And because I want to download and I want to step come to a step down where you can see what I am saying, where it is Jesus. When you read the book of John, chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, look at what Jesus said. John chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. John chapter 3. Amen. John 3. We read him for 14 and 15. And as Moses lifted up, up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So that, my God, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe and leave look and leave it is what you look is what you believe is what give you life so until you learn how to look unto the lord life is still far from you until you know how to look unto the lord those desires are still far from you looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith but i have come to let you know something as i said that jesus is our true image we are where we are now is not our image that number one you where you are now you will see weakness where you are now you will see shortcoming and that is the reason why bible say looking unto jesus he didn't finish there bible did not tell you to look at yourself because when you look at yourself, you see nobody. <laughs> when you look at yourself, you see problem. When you look at yourself, all you see is shortcoming. When you look at yourself, all you see is what? All you see is weakness. When you look at yourself, all you see is trouble. Bible said, looking unto Jesus. It didn't say, looking unto yourself. Stop looking unto yourself and start looking unto Jesus. And somebody will ask me, Pastor, why do you say, stop looking unto yourself and start looking unto Jesus? Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And the Bible said, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And he said, But we all, with open face, beholding as in the glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed. Are changed. I want you to get that. Are changed into the same image so which means the image you see is what you change to become that is the reason why jesus is your true image so when you look at jesus you be like him when you look at jesus you behave like him you act like him you walk like him you move like him time you have passed when pastors can point you to themselves time have passed when we point you maybe to anointing oil, time has passed. When we point you to one thing or the other, but we are in the time to point you to Jesus who will not fail. We are in the time and season to point you to Jesus who is your true image. It's a behold. When we look in that glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit. Even as by the Spirit. But let me show you something. <clears throat> let me show you something now. I want to carry you back to book of Genesis to show you what it takes to look with faith. What it takes for you to be a careful looker. Because when you, listen, let me tell you something. What you look onto is what you change to become. You can't look to mango and want to be orange. What you look onto is what you automatically will change to become. 
All right, let's look at this. Remember in the days of Nabon and Jacob, when Jacob have to serve 14 years because he want to marry Rachel. After seven years, they play him smartness and give him Leah. Leah. Even when Jacob does not like Leah, if Jacob sneezes, Leah will be pregnant. Even when Jacob does not like Leah, when Jacob coughs, Leah will get pregnant. But it's for a season. It's for a reason. But let me tell you, when Jacob married Rachel and he bare him a son, Jacob went to his uncle that is called Laban. He said, Laban, listen, I am now a man. I have my family. Settle me. Release me. Let me go. I want to go and be a man of myself. Enough of being a servant. A family man with all the children become a servant. Why? Because Jacob knew it was because of me that God had prospered Laban. Because of me, God had prospered Laban. Which means you have to know, be careful, people you joined in business. There are people you get yourself attached in business, your business will start going down. There are people you will get attached to in life. Your life will start sinking. Your spiritual life will start decaying. Hallelujah. There are people you get connected to. God will begin to shoot you up. That is why Bible said that iron sharpened iron. When Jacob came in the life of Laban, God blessed him. Follow me. And in all those blessings, when Jacob was to leave, Nabon want to play smartness. But let me show you. You see why it is important to look? Let's look at what happened between Jacob and Laban. So I'm going to give you an assignment because I don't want to take more than 30 minutes on this program. Hallelujah. I'm giving you an assignment because I'm coming back by 11 again. When you... On your time, read the book of Genesis chapter 30. Start from verse 1, read to verse 43. You will get these stories, you that is listening to me. So, but I'm reading from the book of Genesis chapter 30. I'm reading verse 38 right now. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters. In the watering troughs, when the floods came to drink, that they should conceive. When they came to drink, it didn't stop there. And when the flood came, when the flood conceived before the rod, before the rod, before the rod. So what he did, he put a rod. He draw something by the wall, and he put it up by the face of the world when the sheep came to drink as they drinking they are looking as they drinking they are looking and when they are looking they are conceiving what they are seeing in them so bible say that even when those sheep met their children their children were separate their children have colors because Jacob and Laban say, if this sheep make a child and is plain, Laban shall will take it. Because that's Laban, he was a smart man. But he never know that God have given Jacob a, 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 a very good wisdom. And Jacob went and did that. When the sheep conceive, when the sheep is to make a baby, he will make a baby with what? With a wrinkle, with all kind of colors. And Laban said, that one is for you. Neban said that this one is what before he knows about Jacob left Neban's house with more sheep, with more prosperity, more than his master. By what you look, what you behold is what you become. Now, the question is when you see problem, who do you see? 
when you see circumstances who do you see but i have come to announce to you tonight bible didn't tell you you know the one of the problem we have and i have spoken this several times hallelujah men and women does not disappoint you you disappoint yourself why because you look up to men because you put your trust in men if you put your trust in god and look up to god you can never be disappointed you disappoint yourself by putting your trust or putting looking onto a man bible didn't tell you to look onto a man he said looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith we are in the season to look unto the true image of who we are the true image of who we are jesus is the true image of who you are jesus is the true image of who you are so look unto jesus before you go to bed look unto jesus now See this last scripture, and I'm going to leave you with this last scripture. Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 7. Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 7 to 9. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews 7, and the Bible says, Thou madest him a little lower than the angel. Thou crowned him with what? Glory and honor. And did just set him over the works of thy hand. Though he has put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now, but now we see Jesus. Verse 9 says, But now we see Jesus. And I have come to let you know, stop seeing what Jesus has defeated and see Jesus who defeated your problem. Stop seeing the sickness that Jesus has defeated. Stop seeing the pain that Jesus has defeated. Stop seeing the defeat that is under him. Stop seeing there will be a man that is under Christ. Stop seeing all those gods, all those power that is fake, that is powerless, that the power that their owners can feed them, give them milk to drink. But our God is God. We serve our God. He protects us. He keeps us. Look unto Jesus. When you look unto Jesus, you will not see what is under his feet. But when you look under his feet, you will not see Christ. Stop looking at the things that Christ has defeated. That is the problem. That is the reason why you can't sleep. You are seeing the sickness Christ defeated. You are seeing the pain Christ defeated. Just before you go to bed tonight, my prayer, my desire for you, for your family, that from today, your eyes will change. You will begin to see Jesus in all situations. You will see Christ in everything that comes your way. Remember, Peter saw Jesus and Peter walked on the water. Peter and Christ was the only people that have ever walked in the water in the Bible. Why? Because Peter saw his true image. When you look up to Jesus, you will see your true image. And when you see your true image, you can perform. When you see your true image, you can manifest. When you see your true image, you can make impossibility to be possible. When you see your true image, what move others cannot move you. When you see your true image, sad news cannot saddle you. When you see your true image, your confession will not be, I am dying. When you see your true image, all you say, I am strong. When you see your true image, you will see it doesn't matter what I am going through, I am a winner. When you see your true image, you will declare the word. Even when I pass through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. That is a man that has seen his true image. Tonight, I declare, I declare that you will see your true image as you look unto Jesus and not unto man. Because men can fail. Men can fail. Look unto Jesus, 
who is your true image. Oh my God, help me. Look unto Jesus, who is your true image. Tonight, just before you go to bed, I want you to know, there is, listen to this, and I'm going to close with this. Remember, before you go to bed, there are serpents. If you read the Bible, God told him, he said, more the serpent, a serpent, a serpent. So am I telling you now, it doesn't matter any serpent, it doesn't matter whatever that comes your way. When you look at Jesus, you will live. When you look at Jesus, you will be delivered. When you look at Jesus, you will be saved. When you look at Jesus, you will be lifted. Tonight, I pray that as you look unto Jesus, your face will not be put to shame. When you look up to Jesus, you will not be reproached. When you look up to Jesus, your life will never remain the same. When you look up to Jesus, receive boldness in the name of Jesus. Looking unto Jesus will make you as bold as lion. You are a child of God. Jesus is your true image. Do not accept any image except the image of Christ. Don't accept any image except the true image, which is Christ. Don't accept any image except that true image, which is Christ. There is no image for you to accept except the image of God. And I want to let you know that from today, you will move from glory to glory. When you focus on that image, I see you changing into the image that you look onto. I see you changing into the image that you behold. From today, as you behold the image of God, I see you changing into the image you look into. As you look at the image, that true image, I see you changing into that image that you look onto. In the name of Jesus, a man that sees true image will never see that no man love him. A man that sees true image will never say the man say I am nobody. The man that sees true image does not hear words fake people say. But I am telling you, as you have come tonight to recognize the true image that you have and the image to look onto, your life will never remain the same. Just before you go to bed, know it that Jesus is your true image. Jesus is the image to look onto. Stop looking onto yourself. Stop looking onto your weakness. Stop looking where you are. Start looking at where Christ is. Start looking up to him. Start looking up to him. The more you look up is the more you come up. The more you look up is the more you come up. The more you look up is the more you come up. The more you see him is the more you change to be like him. Through that spirit of God. This evening, I leave you with this word. Just before you go to bed, know it. Jesus is the one to look unto. Jesus is my true image. I want to pray for you. I decree and I declare the peace that passeth all understanding. You are here listening to me. You can't sleep even when you go to bed. You are here listening to me. You have a problem sleeping disorder. I don't know who I'm speaking right now. You have a sleeping disorder, but in the name of Jesus, enough is enough. The sleeping disorder is over. You are here listening to me. Before you go to bed, you will struggle to sleep. Today, in the name of Jesus, I command your system to be recreated by the word of God. I command your system to be regenerated by the word of God. And I decree and I declare that you will sleep well. You are here. Before you go to bed, you are in fear. You are living in fear. Today marks the end of it because... Jesus is your true image. 
Focus on him. Look up to him and you will not be put to shame. You will not suffer reproach. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Somebody need to hear this. Somebody need to come across this. Share this message. Send it to somebody. Send it to your family. Send it to your friends. Send it to every group that you know. Somebody need it to know that before they go to bed, there is somebody that is a God they need to look up to. And you keep on looking unto him, you keep on changing to be like him. From glory to glory. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. The Lord lift you. The Lord preserve you. Provide for you. In the name of Jesus, I decree no weapon that form against you shall ever prosper. I stand on the word of God to declare this word. The book of Psalm chapter 9 verse 19. It said, God, arise that no man, no power, no devil, no kingdom shall prevail. I decree and I declare over you, nothing shall prevail over you. Satanic power will not prevail. Enemy will not prevail. Pain will not prevail. Sin will not prevail. I see you being a winner. See you coming out of sin. See you coming out of disorder. I see you coming out from wrong alignment. I see you coming out of wrong friends. I see you coming out of wrong thoughts. I see you coming out of wrong thinking. In the name of Jesus, every demonic attachment, whatever you have been attached to, that is not the plan. That is not the purpose of God for your life. In the name of Jesus, just before you go to bed, you are being separated. You are being detached. In the name of Jesus, peace of God be upon you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.